Everybody rainbow Say you are amazing You are amazing Oh Jesus And you look from heaven We call it sunshine That's amazing Super amazing, super amazing. It's your voice and say, You are amazing. You are amazing. You are amazing. Your love is amazing. You are. Yeah.
share to 24 persons right now do that in the next two minutes and 24 groups whether you're watching via youtube facebook or champions tv plus tell somebody to tell somebody uh we are live right now you and your prophet there's power in operating in the prophetic and so today we are going to break the bread of life without wasting time. I want you to share to 24 persons right now. Do that right away and let's see you start sharing right now. We know that some of you already know our culture of asking you to share, to tell somebody, to tell somebody that need to hear what God is doing and what God has started. Today is yet another edition of this powerful word explosion and intercessory moment with you and your prophet my names are joshua Egila, and i bring forth the bread of life to you this evening i want to believe that the worship section was electrifying and i want every one of you so please tell me where you are watching from and, who, and how many people you have shared to let's just get in two minutes to bless some people who have shared don't just be an invisible viewer. Those of you on Facebook and on YouTube, let's see if we can just check those who have shared. We know so many people have been sharing when we were worshiping, but we wanted to do that now. And um, Grace and Aker said, I've shared from you, Daddy, God bless you. Let me get more people to share. She was there, wait, so said, I have shared. God bless you. Let's see those sharing. If you have shared, let's see you do that from every angle. Don't just watch. Uh, Prince Idamasa said I've shared to 32 groups. God bless you. Let's see you do that. Keep sharing or start sharing. And if you have shared, please indicate while we're worshiping, maybe you did yours. Just let us know what you have done. Um, Samuel Owoseni said, mm -hmm. I have shared, sir. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Samson Philip, I have shared to 24 people. God bless you. Tifka mm -hmm. sent a favor. Said, I have shared daddy. God bless you. Brother Harry Ebenezer, I have shared daddy from Zambia. God bless you. See? Samuel Owoseni said, I have shared from Lagos. Okay, God bless you. Prince Johnson said, I have shared to 32 groups. God bless you, keep sharing. Tando Nkosi Milo, I have shared. God bless you. Comfort Ibrahim Ezra. Papa, I have shared from Adamawa. God bless you. We have Laura Adamo. Adamo. So I've shared to 50 groups from Mozambique automatically. That's about 1,000 according to her. God bless you. Keep sharing. Olufemi Johnson Tayo. I have shared to 32 groups on my phone. God bless you. From the city of Wonders, Abuja. Daniel Bunde said, I've shared to 20 groups. Bruce Johnson said, 43 people, God bless you. Let's have that rolling quickly. Apostle Chuck 
for K are shared. Is it to be to good evening, sir? I have shared. Ekong Godwin, Daddy, I have shared from Libya. Keep doing that, keep sharing. Loretta Onyemechi, I have shared from Kwara State. Choba Muleya, I have shared to 20 people. Powerful. Happiness Stone, Daddy, I have shared. Wow. Dagogo David, Papa, more grace, I have shared. Wow, wow. Gonsei Godwin, Ayo Deji, shared Daddy from Togo. Mm. Awesome. Rita, Leticia. I have shared to all my groups. God bless you. Let's start today. I want to share with you what we titled Mysteries of Dreams. Mysteries of Dreams. Dreams are very important. Let's get there. We have two scriptures to read from. Uh, let's take from um, that of Mary and then we get the dreams of uh, the dream of Joseph. Yeah, Can you read from which Scripture. Okay. Okay. If you've seen yours, just okay. Um, I'm reading that of Joseph in Matthew chapter one, from verse eighteen. Matthew chapter one, from verse eighteen. Now the birth of Jesus Mysteries Christ. Mysteries of dream. Yeah. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Mm -hmm. When, as his mother Mary was exposed to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, mm -hmm. was minded to put her away privately. Mm -hmm. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, mm -hmm. saying, Joseph, mm -hmm. thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. So the angel appeared to Joseph in a dream to correct the impression. Okay. For and the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Where are you reading from? That's Luke chapter one. Luke chapter one. Oh, yes, from verse thirty. From verse thirty. The angel Appeared to Mary in what? Okay, he didn't say in a dream here. Just and the angel appeared and said to her, "Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God." Now, other other synoptic gospel will tell you that the angel appeared to her in a dream, as powerful as the Lord. God Almighty and the entrance of the Lord Jesus Christ to the earth. One of the medium God used to pass the message of his entrance was a dream. He did not appear physically. It was dream. He appeared in dream to Mary. That which you carry is conceived of the Holy Ghost. When Joseph was doubting if the baby, I wanted to put her away privately, the angel appeared in dream to correct that impression. When Herod sought to kill the child, God appeared in dream. So dreams are very powerful. If dreams are not powerful, God will not use dreams as medium to speak to his children. So dreams are the vehicle in which God used to communicate life. Your dream shapes your life your dreams 
Or your dream world is the real world. And it's the world which is called the world of reality. And they give birth to some of the things that happen physically on earth. But we can't talk about dream. We can't talk about sleep. God is Alpha and Omega. The scripture says, He neither sleep nor slumber. On Psalm 121 verse 4. If you can put it on the screen and if you can read for me. Psalm 121 verse 4. So we need to look at dream. He said, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. So we know now, in the attribute of God, there's nothing like sleep. There's nothing like sleep. So when God created man in the garden of Eden, man had this same attribute. Man never knew what is called sleep. Man never slept at all. In Genesis 1, 26, 1, 28, Everything about man was carrying the capacity and that capacity was a volume of life. Man never knew what is called sleep. Man was operating in the, in the potentiality of God. Because the dream world is a spiritual world. So, the first time the word sleep was mentioned, was because God was about to bring a woman out of the rib of a man. Wow. Wow. Now, let's look at Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. Oh, maybe, maybe before there, you see where the Bible says, And the Lord caused man to fall into deep sleep. I think from verse 6. Genesis 2 21. Yeah. Genesis 2 21. And the Lord God caused in a deep sleep. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to, to fall upon Adam. To fall upon Adam. And he slept. And he slept. Adam did not want to sleep. God forced him to sleep. Mm. Because if God had not forced him to sleep, Adam would have not sleep. Then he took out of his dream. Because Adam was carrying too much power and too much volume of fire that God can't do that operation while Adam is while Adam's eyes are open. If not, there is going to be a volume of clash of electricity. So God had to force Adam to sleep. So the, this is the first time the word sleep was mentioned and it was mentioned because God wanted to create another being out of man. So God forced him. So from Genesis chapter 1 to Genesis chapter 2 to 19, man had that capacity of neither sleeping no slumber. Oh. So he could, the capacity was in man. So there was no need for him to sleep. Right. He worked 24 hours and operated in the capacity and in the power of the, of the most high. Because he was created in the image of God and after his likeness. So there was nothing like sleep. So when Adam fell into a deep sleep, God brought out Eve from his rib. So anytime a man sleeps, there is a spiritual surgical operation that takes place. Oh operation is taking place in that man's life. There is a cutting, there is a removing, and there is a sealing. So sleep is another doorway for convenient progression. Wow. Mm. Anytime a man sleeps, there is a cutting, there is a bringing out, there is a sealing. 
So that's why sometimes when you wake, when some people wake up from sleep, they feel weak. Some wake up from sleep, they feel energetic. Something has happened. Anytime a man sleeps, he closes the door of the physicality and opens the door of spirituality. Whether an unbeliever or a believer. Sleep is another way of testing dead and resurrecting back to life. That's why in the scripture, when they ask Jesus, mm -hmm. as scripture said that when a seed falls to the ground and dies, mm -hmm. it abides alone. Mm -hmm. So that the, all I'm, I'm learning from here now is that sleep is a mystery, mm -hmm. a very deep mystery. For us, we human, we we'll think that when someone sleeps, we sleep because we want to rest. Yeah. But then I think from the analysis you have just given, sleep is more spiritual. Mm. Sleep is, you know, the medical... When they go in, what they in... Oh my God. Even an unbeliever, a witch doctor, can visit the spirit world by, via sleep. Mm. And that is why when somebody sleeps and doesn't wake up, we call it death. We all die every day, but we don't know. We call it sleep, but it is not sleep. It's a spiritual transportation system. Oh. My God. Wow. Father, please yeah. um, let me let, let us let us look at it from this perspective. Talking about sleep and dream mm -hmm. and all that. Um, I want to look at it from a mastery. Mm -hmm. Is it so? Is it possible? Because we have some theories that people say uh, you when you go to this uh, dream world, you mm -hmm. sleep, you roam, you roam. The, mm -hmm. There's this theory they say you roam around the spirit realm mm -hmm. and search for things and come back. Mm -hmm. Now, is there is is there any dimension of mastery that act? Of course, that's why when we say somebody is spiritual, you see the difference between Christianity and spirituality is that Christianity is a religion. Spirituality is the way a spirit roams in the realm of the spirit positively. And now you become a spiritual man. That is why you find men who don't even call Jesus, but they understand the law of spirit reign. And they can go in and consult with a negative spirit, and that negative spirit works for them. And we have, that's why, why, why do we call him Holy Ghost? It's because there is an unholy ghost. Mm. That's why we say Holy Ghost do it. We don't even understand why it's called. Because in the realm of the spirit, there are ghosts that are not holy. There are spirits that are not holy. Wow. That's why we call them evil spirits. So we, when we say Holy Spirit, we mean the spirit of God. And now, that capacity to be conscious while you are sleeping and having victory while you are sleeping is because you are now a spiritual man. That you are in the dream war, you are winning. You fight battles in the dream war, you win. You come out, you are fighting battle. you won the battles, you came out, you're, you're, you're sub, out of your subconsciousness, in your subconsciousness, every time you win because you have mastered the art of understanding dreams. That dream is not just... First of all, you must understand that sleep is to lay you to rest so that your flesh can give way for your spirit man. Because your flesh cannot be active while your spirit man is active at the same time. So whenever your flesh goes to rest, so God has so much designed it that we get tired. So that the spirit man should walk over you. So that the things you don't know that is affecting you in the physical realm, your spirit man can take it up to walk. You are watching right now. Make sure you call the numbers right now and send me your dreams. Because some of you need to get interpretation to your dreams. There are some of you here that you don't know that you don't need a prophet. God has shown you what is wrong, but you don't know 
the significance and the interpretation of that dream. Mm. You have something to say, so, Father? Me? Before before you go off this, uh, I still want to uh, want you to throw more light on this aspect of the dream. Mm. Now, when the dream comes in like that, we mm. see people who say um, they see themselves um, building mansions in the dream. Mm -hmm. They come back. They don't have that capacity of what they see in the dream. It, Which one is the real thing? That mansion you saw in the dream, yes. that is who you are. Hmm. Your spirit man is telling you, whether you see yourself, you know somebody, some people tell you that uh, when you see yourself counting money, it's because um, it means you are going to be poor. That's rubbish. Some people are converting their positive energy in the realm of the spirit to negative. Because your faith can Convert a positive dream. Your spirit man is showing you your capacity that you are supposed to be in a duplex. Mm. That that is what you have, and you have the capacity. So when you come out from that dream, it simply means you are a giant at that time. That is where you are supposed to be. So your flesh has stagnated you, and your mindset has stagnated you. So now, what do you need to do? Is now to now begin to pray what you have seen. And picture what and capture what you have pictured and saw in the dream and bring them to the physical. Then ideas will begin to drop that are going to come from the spirit man. Most people don't understand that the spirit man doesn't feed you with junk, feed you with the reality. But your flesh man tells you that you are not capable. So to be carnally minded is death. To be spiritually minded is life everlasting. If God can warn Joseph in a dream that Herod was coming and Joseph took the child and run, why do you take... You see, the way you take your dream, it determines how you take spiritual things. Because your dream is the doorway making you a prophet to yourself. That means... God is speaking to you directly. And that is why sometimes, some people don't know why they don't remember their dream. Because when the enemy knows you take notes of your dream and you walk on it very well, they make you forget the dream. Oh. Wow. The first three minutes after you wake up from your dream, we call it the transition moment from the dream world or from the spiritual world to your physical world. Your mind is still carrying what we call the walk over of what you saw. That is why when you are waking up, you begin to say, I saw something. So I, there's a dream. Most people miss it at that time. That is not the time to pick up your phone. That's the time to relax. Meditation is the doorway of recovery. Of every lost dream. Wow. Wow. Meditation simply means you press your recording machine on forward, backward, rewind. And as you go backward a little bit, you are trying to pick, you remember one object or one picture. By the time you remember that picture, the whole of the dream comes back. Sometimes you can even just wake up from your bed, you are going to eat yourself, but you are meditating. And then, if, and sometimes when you discover, you may say, I saw something. When you trouble your mind that I saw something, you are going back to the dream world. Because the flesh wants the spirit to be disconnected from you. And most often, every dream you are trying to forget is important to your destiny. That's, that's true. Okay. Tell me something. Mm. You, you have touched one major area which has to do with people forgetting their dreams. Mm -hmm. This is very common, common. In, even in the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But then another area that is of concern is that some people say they don't dream at all. Are they living? Is that they don't have spirits. They don't <laughs> dream at all. They just wake up. They say, no, I didn't dream at all. Or is it that they belong to this category of people who dream but don't remember it? There is no woman being on earth that does not dream. No woman being on earth that does not dream. It's either the spirit man of that person is caged down 
or there's what we call spiritual blankness. Hmm. The person is com completely blank. That person that tells you that he does not dream is in a big danger. Hmm. At any time, the enemy can claim the life of that person. Yeah. Or there's a witch around that environment that is causing a blanket so that he do that person does not see. And again, you see, when you hear people say, I don't dream, I don't dream. Sometimes, they don't pay attention. There is what I call spiritual laziness. Once some people wake up, they are very lazy to, to recover their dreams. Now, when you, when you are used to how to recover dreams, when you just wake up automatically, bam, it just, it just follow you. But if you are any, there was a time in my life, one day, I had more than 16 dreams, and I remembered all, all. The story of my life from Joss, Plateau State, to Ibadan, Ogun State, Agilete, everywhere, is centered on dreams. This big church, dream, I wrote them down, dates. The most sure revelational word that comes most often, they come in a dream world. Sometimes, you can even be in an aircraft. You can even be somewhere. I remember I was going to see a president of a country and they were waiting for me. I was up there in the sky, studying the world, and God just knocked me down with sleep. Bam! And I had a clear revelation of I met him, what I said to him, what is going to happen to him. It came. Immediately, I opened my eyes. I saw it was a dream. But I remember, I wrote everything down. And the Lord said to me, that is his message. So the dream world is very powerful. God looked around and felt that there was a need for, for man to have access to the spirit world. Because I, God was coming to visit man in the cool of the evening. And so, when you have revelations and dreams, what we call dreams, you don't play with it at all. Nebuchadnezzar had dream. Symbolic dream. So far, calf being swallowed by lean calf. That was an unbeliever. Not born again at all. I mean, Pharaoh. Not born again at all. Did the dream come to pass? Yes. So people think it's only a believer. No. It's a gift that God gives anyone that is a mankind. Power of dream. Wow. Don't convert your positive dream to negative dreams. But there are people who feel that every dream they have is negative. If it is positive, say, hey, anytime I see myself celebrate, we say it means that I'm going to cry. You are the cause. You are telling yourself that what you saw, that your spirit mind told you, that is deception. Sorry, I want to drive you a bit backward. Yeah. For better understanding. There are people who, for instance, they are being chased in a dream. And they wake up tired. Some even wake up panting. Yeah. And weak because they are chased in a dream. Mm -hmm. Some of them fell maybe from a cliff. Mm -hmm. They fell down. Mm -hmm. And they had pain on their leg. Mm -hmm. And then they woke up with leg pain. Yeah. Some people share dreams like I was shot gone mm -hmm. in my dream mm -hmm. and I was shot from my chest mm -hmm. and they woke up and they start having chest pain. Mm -hmm. That was the link between the spirits, this spiritual, this dream as a spiritual activity having effects on the flesh when we wake up from dream. Mm -hmm. The real you is who you saw in the dream, not this person here. This person here is the container. 
This is the suit. It's like varying this cloth than your skin. This flesh is covering the real you. Now, I'm talking now. You are hearing me. The real me is the person speaking through me. This skin you see is covering the real me. It's called the flesh. That was the suit God did in Genesis 2-7 by forming and breaking into man. So you must understand that when you see yourself in the dream, that is your true personality showing you who you are. When they are chasing you in the dream, your spirit man is telling you that you are a weak person and that the enemies are after you and that your life is a life of running. That you are in the midst of enemy. That some things, some people are looking for your downfall. When you find out that the person hits you and you wake up, the, the Lord is trying to tell you, via that dream, the spirit man is informing you, via that dream, that it is so close that at any time it can happen. If they shot you with God and you feel the impact, that dream is indicating that you are already a victim of something that you don't know. Probably a sickness is already in your body. If it is by the chest, go and check your heart. You might be having an high blood pressure that you don't know. And your spirit man is giving you an information that if you don't take care of your blood pressure or take care of your heart, I will soon check out of this body and I don't want to go. So you need to understand that dreams are not for entertainment. Maybe you see snake chasing you in a dream. Some people will say it's marine spirit. It's far from marine spirit. It means somebody, if you're a young girl, you're not married. It means a man is after you that wants to marry you, but he's a deceiver. If you find out that in a dream, there's a snake in the room, and you were trying to search out, and you eventually saw the snake, and you ran. God is trying to tell you there is a friend. There is a family friend. A friend that is close to you. Oh God. That is having this snaky pattern. Sometimes being pregnant in the dream, it depends on the dreamer. If she's single and she's not married and she saw that she was pregnant in the dream and in that dream she was not happy, it means unwanted pregnancy is coming. Maybe the man will not take responsibility. If she's barren and she says she's pregnant, God is trying to give her a good news that is coming. Sir, before, please, before you. And sometimes carrying a baby and you already have children, and you see yourself carrying a baby. It might not just be baby. It might just be an idea that is in your life is about to give birth to productivity. It can be business, it can be prosperity. Mm. That, that is so this this your approach to this analysis you are mm. giving, I see it to be a bit different from what our people are used to. Mm -hmm. It's like there is a stereotyped way of interpreting dreams. And, and it's, yeah. But you are giving us another dimension, which mm -hmm. is spiritual, far, far more spiritual. Yeah. I think the stereotype dimension looks like something that is already there. So when you dream, you have that dream, you wake up, yeah. you already know the meaning. No, that's why some people, some people have misinterpreted godly dream and call it negative dream. Now, 
It is not all eating in the dream that is demonic. Yes, sir. There are eating in your dream that is actually demonic. But some deliverance ministers have generalized everything. That all eating in the dream is demonic. For example, he's trying to use Panadol to cure both cancer, HIV, arthritis, and heart problems. Uh, that is what most deliverance ministers are doing. God appeared to Peter in a dream. And in that vision, he saw different kind of animals coming down from heaven. And God told him to rise up and eat. And he said to God that those things are unclean. And God said, you don't have a right. As per this dream, there was nothing unclean. So it depends on how. When you see yourself in a banquet... Where there's a lot of celebration and people are gathering around you. And the table is set, beautiful, wonderful. And you are eating in the presence of people and it's a celebration. God is just trying to tell you that your celebration has come and something is already coming that you will eat the fruit of your labor. Where there are some times you see some people eat okra soup in the dream. And from that dream, they are even spitting. That one is spiritual poison. Mm. You can even tell from the dream that what you eat is problem. problem. You will see yourself even from the dream. You, the person is spitting. The person is already sweet. Uh, already, uh, the person has taken that thing and after that person, oh, what I took is very bad. Mm. That kind, that's spiritual poison. Do you know why you should not play with dreams? You had a dream. You were making love with a male or a female in the dream. And you woke up, your body was wet. Did you call that an ordinary dream? You woke up, you messed up the whole place. And, and somebody tells you not to take a dream serious. That dream produced something physical on your body. Mm. That is our dream. Huh? In dream world, you can break through to physical. Mm. 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 My God. Mm. Wow. Father, um, Free. Two, two, two things that I just want to uh, wrap together mm -hmm. before. Yeah. You know, I've heard pastors talking about uh, people who talk about dreams and all that that is useless mm -hmm. and there's nothing like that in fact i watched a man of god talking uh, saying that if you eat in the dream and all that it's a good thing that uh, nobody should tell you and there's nothing negative about that i begin to wonder maybe uh there's something to it then secondly secondly um i just want you to make a just opposition between um the future and the past mm -hmm. just these two uh, uh things People dream about the future, things they have not achieved on earth, mm -hmm. and they see it. There are a lot of people who dream about the past. Is it always negative when you dream about things you have done in the past? Even if it's a good thing, maybe you see yourself with people, but it's something of the past you have done. Is it always negative? That's why we must look at the source of dream. Number one, source of dream, it comes from the Bible calls it out of the multitude of business. The activity of the day can be recorded as dream. Number two, imagination, desire. That sometimes you can desire a thing that it has moved from your spirit man to your spirit being. So that your spirit is getting the effect of that thing, feeling it. So it's no longer a desire from the flesh anymore. It is affecting your spirit. So your spirit man is showing you that this is the stage of your prayer point. Mm. Then there's the one that is a revelation that comes as a result of God showing you. And there's one that is demonically sponsored, which is called nightmare. nightmare. So a demon can introduce a dream to you to manipulate you. For example, show you your wife or show you your mother as a witch. That's why every dream must go through some standard of text. And that standard is the word of God. Mm. So when somebody dreams, 
and sees his or herself in the past. The yastic must be number one. Every dream must not be used. You must not interpret every dream based on the conventional methodology people use and say, once you see yourself in the past, this happened. Sometimes, your spirit man might be trying to show you something that has happened. That is the missing link of what is happening to you now. Sometimes when you see yourself in the secondary school, then you add, you see yourself with your friend in the secondary school. And in that dream, you people are moving around. But he actually gave you something like a biscuit or something to eat and you ate. Your, your spirit man might be trying to tell you that something happened to you while you were in secondary school. And that is a defect to your life. Probably you've been initiated and you don't know. And that you have to readdress your foundation so that you can be better now. Wow. A lady can be seen as ex boyfriend in the dream while she is in the future with her husband. And she might think that it's a setback and it could be a setback. And 90% of such dream is that each time she has a misunderstanding with her husband, she compares her husband with the ex-boyfriend. So a spirit man is warning her that you are still connected to your past. It might not be sent back. You are connected to your past than your future. Why when somebody sees him, his or herself, you saw yourself in the one room where you are living before. And then you still saw yourself lying down on the same bed. Then you are carrying the same bucket that you used to do. And now you live in duplex. God is trying to warn you that the things you are doing now will take you back to where you are coming from. Wow. That means maybe you want to take a business decision. Maybe you want to, you want to, you want to relocate. Such dreams sometimes come. Maybe you want to relocate, or maybe you want to marry a partner. Maybe you want to do one thing or the other. Then you now see yourself. It might not be an evil dream. It might be your spirit man taking you back to where you have suffered, trying to tell you that this is where you are. Or sometimes your spirit man is remembering you that you are ungrateful to God for where you are because you have forgotten where you started from. But when we rise up from bed, we are quickly to say, every spirit of setback, Holy Ghost fire, cast fire. Sometimes it might be a setback. Sometimes it might be your, the Holy Spirit trying to take you back. And say, have you forgotten where he brought you from? Mm. Wow. wow. The giraffe is the tallest animal in the jungle with a long neck is the only animal that shares an attribute that is close to God. A research done about 1950 says the giraffe sleeps just only 30 minutes a day. Just 30 minutes a day. And sometimes, when it wants to sleep, it can be on its feet while sleeping. And sometimes, it takes his head, put at his back to sleep for just 30 minutes. It's the only animal with one kind of capacity, a rugged capacity, that can, that can reject sleep. If that animal is created by God and has that capacity, how much more what God can do? I'm trying to tell try to tell people who say, God, how can we God not sleep nor slumber? The only reason why God makes us to sleep is to gain access to the spirit world, what we call dream. And that dream is to be documented, is for our own guide. When I hear somebody says, God never spoke to me. Keep quiet. God did speak to you. Mm. But you never mm. took note of it. Mm. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm worried about something. Sir. 
determine and this still has to do with particularly amongst young ministers that is dream enough to convince a young minister about an assignment about a mission about a mandate particularly a movement that I had a dream is it enough to convince a man that he has a call of God upon his life dream is very important what others young men will call it revelation or vision but every dream has an appointed time one of the greatest problems you can have, your dream can become a curse to you. If you don't know how to handle it and how to harness the energy that comes from dream. For example, if you dream and you see that God has called you to start your own ministry, the first question you ask yourself is, physically, am I prepared? Secondly, do I have the capacity to do what I saw in the dream. Thirdly, there's what we call the when, the where, and the how. The when, is it the time? The where, the location. The how, it's the process to follow, to get there. If you don't factor the where, the when, and the how into that dream, and you jump, you will fail. And then you must ask, how did I get to this point where I start having this dream? So motives have to be checked. Sometimes there might be an inordinate ambition or somebody has talked you into it or somebody has given you prophecy and you have not been thinking about that. And for the past 10 years that you have not been thinking about that, you never saw the dream and you started seeing that dream one month after somebody told you that you have that, that's a manipulation. That's not a revelation. Because most often, some people might desire something for you and might not be what God will have for you. And that's why words are seeds. When people come to tell you something, you must, nah, don't, 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 that thing you are saying is not me. But words are seeds. And let me tell you, your mind your mind has the capacity to record it. There are things that happen to you when you are five years, six years. If you sit down, you can remember. Yes. So your record system, your mind has a record system. So when you, that's why the company you keep, the conversation you keep with people can influence what you see in the night. So the yes to use to measure certain dreams. Did I think about it? Was I talked into it? Did I have a desire? So if I, so I say, this is a dream that is better out of the multitude of activities around my life. So that's not a vision. That's not a dream. But if I'm not thinking about it, it never came to my heart. Nobody ever discussed it with me. Then I have it. There are people who watch horror movie before they go to bed. And by the time they go to bed, they see themselves dreaming horrible things. That's not a nightmare. That's an horror movie duplicated in your dream world. So that means what you feed your mind with can also be expressed in the dream. Very true. Mm. Very true. Mm. Very true. Like you have rightly analyzed it. Sometimes it could be as a result of circumstances around them, maybe where they are serving, where they are working, where they are doing this and that. So their spirit man is being fed negatively. As a result of that, they go to sleep and start dreaming all kinds of dreams. So I think young ministers have to really pay attention to this particular area. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of young ministers, sir, have been misled by this and when they go out there mm -hmm. they need to challenge this they don't start blaming god but god you actually said to me you actually revealed to me but not knowing that it was not a dream that was given to them by god of course. The revelation 
it was circumstantial. Uh, just their yeah, imagination was. If you if you see any pastor who is around a pastor that criticizes other pastors, I call them occultic. They will always dream and see a pastor being occultic. Hmm. That's it. I've had cases where you see wives coming that my husband wants to use me for ritual. I saw him in a dream and I asked them. I said, don't tell me about the dream. Tell me what happened before the dream. Were you prophesied to? No, I met one prophet. He said to me, my husband is occulting. I said, that's where it's coming from. And I said, how, how old is the marriage? My marriage is 22. My marriage is 18. And I said to her, for 16 years, your husband has not been occulting. Until you met the prophet. Or the so-called prophet. So, dreams are very manipulative. Mm. Some people have left their spiritual father in the name of dream. Mm. That's true. Some marriages have scattered in the name of dreams. Mm. Some people don't know when to use the energy of faith for a dream. Because when you faith a dream that is demonic, manipulative, demonically sponsored, or activity, the activities of multitude of business sponsored, you are going to fail. That's why you must be sincere to yourself when you wake up from the dream. After you will have recovered the dream, you now ask yourself, trying to kill you, and you fly over them, and you land in a place of safety. It's actually victory in dream, and it's speed in dream. It is not offline in dream. If offline in dream, is witchcraft. Angels flying are witches. Awesome. <laughs> My God. You have dealt with one. <laughs> okay, tell out me. Out of numerous. Okay, just tell that me. Tell me. Confusing a whole of you can also test on Facebook or YouTube yes, your dream. dream. Let, brain just brain. read yes. some of them. Then I will break them. We interpret them. Daddy, we, we have. Please, at the council, we have we need more time for this. Eh? We, we, we don't have, all we have common kind of specific dreams mm -hmm. that a whole lot of people today have been misled, uh -huh. manipulated. Thank you. By some so-called even deliverance ministers. Tell me, tell me. That tell for me. instance, there are dreams that have to do with somebody having sex, for example, yeah. in the dream, mm -hmm. and then you hear the person have spirit husband. A spirit mm -hmm. husband that is disturbing the person. Mm -hmm. And if it's a, a, a man, mm -hmm. it's a spirit wife. Mm -hmm. These are major issues that is affecting people today. When we talk about sex in a dream, there are trigger points to it. Some are spiritually sponsored and some are out of activities. What movie did you watch before you sleep. If you watch an erotic movie, it's going to influence the reason why you had a dream. If you are lost in after a man too much and you have carried him too much in your heart that you are hallucinating and you are desiring, you will soon see him in a dream. It can give birth to that. Either to a woman, vice versa. And when you see that it's not a spirit wife, it is your spirit desire. I mean your desire. Your desire is playing out in a dream. Some people wake up from such dream and the desire grows crazier. And so that kind of desire, you can't call that a spirit wife. You need to discipline your mind and watch what are the trigger points. If you are into pornography and into so many things, it can influence your dream world and you think it's a spirit mm. wife. Why some are actually spirit wives and spirit husbands? Mm. That's true. But you need to ask. That's what I would say. In interpreting a dream, you have to look at it and ask yourself, what is the activity that happened prior to that time? It's very important. Mm. Tell me. Yes. I think uh, somebody just um, no tando uh -huh. Kosie, Milo. Uh -huh. 
I always dream carrying a baby. Mm -hmm. When I wake up, it's either someone takes the baby from me or mm -hmm. I give the baby to someone. I don't understand it. Now, you have to ask yourself, that dream might not be necessarily connected to the issue of children. Oh. It simply means there's an idea that person has. There is something productive around that person. Oh. That, he, that person has to be careful that somebody close to her should not steal it from her. Oh. And it might not even be an idea, it might even be a man that she is in love with, that is her baby. That if she's reckless about it, somebody will plug it out of her hand. If, if, if such person, for instance, is a minister, yeah, could that baby mean his if ministry? His ministry, yes. That baby can be his ministry. And God is trying to warn that person, be careful of the guest ministers you are bringing to your church. Mm. Maybe that person is even planning to do a program or... He is already advertising a program. Oh. <laughs> you see, dreams are very deep. You see, we need to talk more of this because many people are looking for prophet and they don't know they are prophet on their own. When you see yourself naked in a dream, shit, it's really terrible. You see yourself naked in a dream. Number one, you are not a secret keeper. You have exposed yourself. You have a friend you are confiding in and you have exposed all your life. It means you are not clothed. Mm. Number two, it indicates shame. Shame is about to come. Mm. That means something is coming or some people are plotting you to set you up. And if you are not careful, shame will come. It can be a relationship. It can be anything. When you see yourself naked in a dream, it's showing that you are not clothed. You might be surrounded with so many people. It means you are empty. And the people that are around you are looking at your nakedness. And it simply indicates that people are gossiping you. And then ask yourself, what are the things you are trying to cover and hide from people? Some people have known it. So that nakedness in the dream, the Lord is trying to warn you now to say you have exposed yourself too much. Can you change your company? Can you zip your mouth? Can you adjust? Can you learn from what has happened? In not too far distant time, something is going to happen around your life that you discover that some things you think are covered are exposed. Oh. Oh. My God. My God. Now, the problem of you and your prophet is to deal with certain things that people don't talk. Because sometimes we pray, we speak and we do all manner of gymnastics and sometimes some ministers don't even understand. Some ministers, some ministers cannot even draw a line when their dream is out of multitude of business or when their dream is influenced because of their jealous of it. You see, a man of God can be jealous of another man of God in a city and presume or assume that the man of God is supporting and actually see that man of God chasing you in the dream mm. because your dream sometimes gives the people you hate legs to pursue you in dream. Mm. Daddy, I, I have another concern. I, I need you to help in this area. Daddy, what makes that in the physical, a young man who could probably even be an out an, uh, an athlete, someone who can run very well, or a young lady who is very energetic, physically. But in the dream, the person is not able to run when he or she is being chased. Mm -hmm. They are chasing you, and you are not able to run. But physically, you are you can run. full of energy. You can run 100 meters in 10 seconds. But in the dream, you are being chased. You are not able to run. As if something is pulling you back or something. That person's spiritual life is zero. Number one. It shows that physically you are active, spiritually you are not active. And number two, it shows that your wisdom level of life is very low. You are a slow thinker. Hmm. 
that you are not fast in processing things. It simply means that you sit down, there are signs that shows that something is wrong, but you are not designing. So when you see yourself trying to run, it means that you are in a trouble that you are supposed to run out of, but you are relaxed. You are comfortable. When you see that they bob your hair in a dream, somebody is, you are a mugu. Somebody is taking advantage of you. That person is eating from you. That person is deceiving you, looting you. So check. Somebody bab your head and, and the kind of babbing in the head, in the dream. You will see they will bab your head from a dimension where you don't expect. They just bab you. Yeah. They bab you some and they chop you like like, uh, like a tailor when a tailor become a barber. Rough babbing. Rough babbing. Somebody is eating you up. It can be a woman. It means that a guy is in your life. Just turning your using your head to play table tennis. Lying to you and you are relaxed and you are feeling like a queen where you are a zombie. So you have to be careful when things like that, when you have dreams like that. Or in a dream, you just discover that you are in, you have bad hair in the dream. But physically, you don't have bad hair. God is now trying to tell you that there's an area in your life where you lack wisdom. Sometimes, after some time, you will not dream when your hair is full. It simply means you have grown and wisdom has come to you. And maturity has come to you. That where you thought, where you lack wisdom, you have grown into wisdom. If you see yourself having gray hair in a dream, it's talking about longevity. You are living long. For more than 20 years you have been living in this beautiful country in fact flying from one beautiful country to another beautiful country but each time he goes to sleep he's always seeing himself in the village <laughs> that one hey. when you see yourself like that it simply means there's a foundational combinant that is bringing you back and it simply means that no matter how you go from one country to another country You've not actually addressed your situation. Mm -hmm. That person might be having a nomadic mentality. Why God is trying to say, stay somewhere to build your life. Mm -hmm. And it might be that that person's destiny is in his country and not outside. Mm -hmm. When you see yourself falling from an eye height and you almost get to the ground, then you open your eye. That means there is a sudden plot by the enemy to pull you down from your height by some little expensive mistake that can destroy you. Oh. Oh. We have one on Ome Onyegua here. Tell me. Papa, what's the meaning of a dream you have about a friend who slept on a corner of a soccer world pit that have that have caved in? that have you have a what's the meaning of a dream you have about a friend mm -hmm. who slept on a corner please keep calling the numbers call the numbers call my i need to talk to some of you need a prophetic word from me directly i need to interpret it is not just here call my counselors are going to tell you what to do call now 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 they're going to tell you they will give you a direction on how you can get to me. Some of you, I need to give you some explanation. You don't even need prophecy. Your prophecy is already your dream. Yeah, tell me something. Okay, daddy, let me put it simply this way. What's the meaning of sleeping, finding yourself sleeping in a corner of a socket way that is caved in? Caved in as it has, it has collapsed. It has collapsed. The socket has collapsed. Mm -hmm. The person finds himself sleeping beside the socket way. If that person is in a relationship, it's a stinky relationship. And they cave in that the, the that that, that, that socket way, that means that relationship is about to, to, to collapse. Mm. And if you see yourself by soccer way, where there's feces and it is smelly, check your friends the people you are staying with. 
You might be a very decent person in the midst of people who don't have morals. People who are very evil. Who are completely opposite you. But they are not showing you. But they are deceiving you. If you see yourself urinating in a dream and physically as a lady you saw you bed work and it doesn't happen always there's a spirit of shame that will be caused by you that means there's something programmed around you you are using your own hand to destroy yourself and sometimes when you see yourself you urinate that way Check out. God is warning you about abortion coming ahead. That you might not spill your seed and become a barren woman later. God. Yeah. Tell us. Please keep yes. contributing. Better. <laughs> people have been sending so many. So, yes. so many are coming in. Better cheap way. Say, Papa, I always dream preaching the gospel. Casting out demons and raising the dead. Sometimes I move from one place to another. I don't understand it. It might be you have a desire to take the gospel across, and it can just be that God is telling you that that's your mission. That's what He has called you to do. It might not be manifesting now, but you have to start getting yourself, preparing yourself towards there. Sometimes dreams give you direction for the future. Yeah. And we have one well here. Yeah. On Facebook, yeah, okay. Please keep calling the number because not every one of you will attend to is dreams and mystery of dreams and interpretation. We're just dealing with the dreams now. Thank you. She said that she has had this dream more than twice mm -hmm. repeatedly. She saw herself in a dream getting married to the man in her life, mm -hmm. but she never saw the end of that wedding. Mm. Sometimes when you have such dream like that, it's telling you that the beginning of that marriage will be sweet. And at the tail end of that marriage, there might be a collapse in that marriage. And that's where your spirit man is telling you to now strengthen. And sometimes when you meet such men, you are going to see a question that is, the character around them that is questionable. But you are looking away and you don't want to deal with it from the beginning. And if you don't deal with it from the beginning, it will destroy the future. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Samson, Philip, and I think I want to use this his dream too to ask a question. He said, Papa, you always come into my compound in the dream every first of the year. Now, people who, uh, I want you to help for people who see men of God in their dreams. What does it really mean? Sometimes, it has three major interpretations. Sometimes when you see a particular man of God in your dream and it keeps repeating itself in a dream, you see the man of God, you see the man of God, God is trying to tell you that's the prophet I've sent to your life. Maybe you don't even like the man of God and you prefer another man of God. Now there are people who will now be seen, they see one man of God and later on they see another man of God repeatedly. Now, the one of man of God you see might be the one that is distracting you from the man of God that God is showing you. So that you see this one, I see the other one, and you desire, maybe you have watched them, you just love them. Because you, we, many people, you are watching me, you admire men, many men of God for different reasons. But that does not mean because you admire them that they are sent to your life. A specific man of God is sent to your life. And sometimes, some people will be binding the man of God they see in the dream. Say, I don't like that man of God because somebody has spoken or whatever. Social media has said so many things and you don't like. And that man of God might be assigned. So when you continue to see a man of God repeatedly in your dream, you are sent, the man of God is sent to your life and you are sent to him. And that's why you must continue to now study the man of God, pray for the man of God, show to the man of God life, and if possible, make yourself available to see the man of God run one, and even share with him that I used to see you in the dream. Sometimes in telling the man of God, God speaks to them and says, yes, I've sent this person, I've sent you to his life, this is the mission you have to carry out in this person's life. 
Uh-huh. So, so that is, uh, if we if we go backward a bit to the issue of how what we constantly watch, mm-hmm. what we constantly listen to, yeah. is influenced in our dream. Mm-hmm. So does it mean that if I particularly watch a man of God and I particular particularly listen to this particular man of God again and again? Does it mean that God can use that man of God to speak to me in my dream? Yes, it's possible. God will always appear with an image that you honor. Don't forget that God is a spirit, and most of us have not seen God. But he sends his messengers to us. And so he used the object, the image, you, the man of God you honor to speak to you. The man of God might not know. But hear me, that person talking to you might come in the emblem of the man of God, but it's actually an angel of God using the face of the man of God to talk to you. Because not every one of us that can see angels directly. No, you therefore that some of you have entertained angels and did not know unknowingly. So sometimes it's angels using the face of the man of God to speak to you. When you see a madman chasing you in the dream is very very dangerous simply means if you're a young lady and then <laughs> you are not married you might just have a wife beater coming into your life mm. number two it simply means when a madman is chasing you in the dream it simply means you have somebody around your life who does not think straight. Might be somebody who have bipolar and look normal. Sometimes God uses dreams like this to talk to us. Wow. Wow. Daddy, we have one here from Sir Noja Noja. Mm-hmm. What about killing a snake severally in a dream? And most times, those snakes will see you and are hiding from that means you're already having victory over some deceptive people around your life. But it is not finished. They are still around mm. and there are some who know you have identified them. And you might not know. They know you have identified them or they know you are suspecting them. So hiding from you means they are pretending to be a friend. Father, this one says, we need to keep Please praying. keep calling the numbers. My counselors are waiting. I want to speak to some of you directly. It's a deep interpretation. You need to take your dream wall very importantly. And listen to me. Resting, sleeping is one of the ways of strengthening your spirit man so that your spirit man can find expression. Sometimes, immediately you sleep, your spirit man is excited to come out of your body to go and exercise himself. Because believe me or you don't believe me, the truth is that you are a dual being in one person. Whenever you go to sleep, this flesh you see goes to rest for the spirit man to start working. That if you want to have victory mm-hmm. in your dream, mm-hmm. I don't know how true this is. That if you want to have victory in your dream, or you want to dream and remember your dream, mm-hmm. that is always good to go to bed light. That people who go to bed heavy, they always experience defeat in their dream. Mm-hmm. That I don't know how true this assertion is. They are superstitious assertion, but medically, it's very important uh, that you eat before six. And when you are light, really, you enjoy yourself as a human being. When you go to sleep, enjoy. This is why most people, men, have big tummy and the rest of them. You know that it's late, late night. <laughs> late night food. 
<laughs> if you eat apple around seven, uh, around nine thirty or eleven o'clock, and then you sleep around twelve, tell me how will that apple digest? And for those of you who don't, I don't know, how do we call apple in English? <laughs> I just like using the word apple for the Igbos. They know what I'm saying. You know, that's, they call it 48 hours. I don't, <laughs> don't think. It takes time for that thing to digest. Yes. So, I, the only thing I can point, point there is that it does not make an individual who is dreaming to be comfortable. It obstructs your dream world and your sleep. And so, you begin to have what I call scattered dreams and scattered sleep. Because you have a bloated stomach, there's indigestion, and then sometimes some people will even have to have a reflux whereby they have to wake up because the, the food is trying to come out. Wow. wow. Okay. Father, this, yeah. this, this other aspect, I think we need to touch it a little yeah. bit because it's very crucial to dream it too. Mm -hmm. uh, if, we, if, we, if we take the story of Joseph, yeah. it talks about uh, Joseph's dreams and the uh, um, sharing it with his mm -hmm. brothers. I want to ask this question. Is it, is, it, is, it, is it good to throw caution or to throw reservation when it comes to destiny dreams? That's true. That's not telling everything or not telling everybody your dream mm -hmm. or certain people your dream. That's true. It's not everybody that is made to get your dream. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you can destroy yourself by people you share your dreams with. That people just feel you are not qualified for what you are trying to do. So they will attack you. So it's not everybody that should have access to your dream. In fact, you can destroy yourself by who you share dreams with. Because not everybody that is matured. That's why the father of Joseph, who is Jacob, observed his sin. Why others took advantage of what he was saying and they were angry. So it's not everybody that you should share. So to throw caution on your dream is very important. You don't just share your dreams with everybody. Sometimes some dreams are made for your own personal consumption. Talking about spirituality, you find out that God is in the business of raising men. Let's just put this, just how many minutes do we have? Okay, still, just the next 20 minutes before we take worship. God raises up men. The dream world is another angle of the giftings. We are in the days of power. And God wants us to operate in power. Once have I spoken, twice have they heard that all power belongs to God. Sometimes the church is against power. And we say God is almighty. There's nothing he cannot do. But when we see manifestation of power, we suspect it. One of the greatest set of people that don't believe God is believers. Without the capacity of God, the ability of God. I came from an Islamic background. But my faith in God is so high that even some people who are born in a Christian family, you don't have that kind of faith. And the whole kingdom of God, the Bible says the kingdom of God is not in words, it is in the demonstration of the power of God. So if somebody is serving God and is just trying to lower the power of God down to a mere entertainment, somebody tells you HIV cannot be healed, Cancer cannot be healed. That all these things are fake. Clip is working. It's not real. You don't dare to doubt God. He can do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we ask or think. What do you think? Father, I think this point is, this uh, discussion goes a long way to uh, drag us into some men of God and yeah. some people who are uh, doubting the power of God and, mm -hmm. and all that. Uh, I want you to, 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 to give us a, 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 a pattern line or a draw the pattern in this uh, power thing. A lot of men of God talk about teaching the world 
always and expressing God's word, you know, teaching the word, teaching the word. Some of them will say, hold on to the word, hold on to the word. That is, they try to downplay power, always downplay power. In fact, I've heard some men of God say that uh, miracles is not for our time, it's mm -hmm. not for this time and all that. I don't, I don't know why a man of God will operate on the <laughs> altar without power. I, I, I think is one of the reasons why most men of God will live all their life like sadists and they will continue to fight another man of God throughout their lifetime. Because we are really in the days of power and you cannot take power away from Christianity. In fact, Christ means the anointed one. That's the meaning of Christus, the anointed one. You take anointing out of Christianity, and not, Christianity is no longer Christianity. And God is raising up men with great power, with great potential. So when somebody tells you that, hold on the word, hold on the word, hold on the word, the word is not quoting John 3, 16, quoting 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 17. The word is not um, saying the beginning was the word. No, you can quote them. The latter kill it, but the spirit give it life. Quoting the Bible doesn't make you a student of the word. Mm. Teaching and not prophesying doesn't make you a word-based preacher. That's, right. mm. That's why I've said it that in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And so the word is a person. The word is a personality. Mm. So if you tell me that you know the word and you don't know the person behind the word, then you are reading scripture that tells my son pay attention to my saying. Incline your word to my saying. For they are life to those who find them and help. So if the word does not come from, from ink and paper to life, then you are not a word-based preacher. In fact, the volume, oh God. This is one of the things that get me worried. Somebody is teaching the word of God and he's telling other people, don't go to that man of God. And then hear what he's saying. He says, if you go to that man of God, you are going to be contaminated. How can I carry the Holy Ghost? No matter how false that prophet is false, you cannot touch the spirit of the most high God inside me. Some gospel preacher can't even go to other churches. Because another man of God is telling them, if you go there, you are finished. The altar will be... How can you carry the Holy Ghost and all in mind? And you are singing to the Most High God. And your anointing will not deliver that occultic man of God. They don't tell you, don't go and minister there. That if you go and minister there, that's the end. That shows that you are carrying a fake Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost is authentic, the first prophet, the first teacher, the occultic teacher should be afraid of you. One should live, one should believe that if you associate, you are going to be contaminated. It is because you are not sure of the genuity of the grace you carry. Mm. Jesus ate with publicans. He went to Zacchaeus' house. He told Zacchaeus, come down, go. They say he eats with sinners. And yet the anointing was not contaminated. If the thing you are carrying is not fake, if the thing you are carrying has foundation, it has roots, somebody cannot influence you. You are graduate. Meeting an editor, does it stop you from being a, a literate person? No, it doesn't. You can speak good English. It, no matter how you meet an Adbero, or you meet somebody that does not know the latter, does not know anything, it cannot deactivate the knowledge you carry. Once knowledge becomes questionable as a result of association, it means the knowledge was not, was not there at all. We live in a world today where people are tired of just hearing the word. Mm -hmm. Because even the scripture is a combination of the teachings of Christ mm. and the manifestation of the power of God. Yes. Thank you. Sir, when members in a quest for solution to their problem mm -hmm. migrate from one ministry to another ministry, 
because they are looking for help. Should a pastor stand on his altar and place a curse on them? That's absolutely wrong. Is there any church in Africa or here, even in the world, that we are not pastoring somebody's member that migrate from another church here? Even the you know, most, most pastors, when they say that my member left me, ask them, what is the history of that member? From which church is coming? Who will we say about Catholic church that their members have left to Pentecostal? When the pastor placed a curse on his member for leaving him, it is because he's not even qualified to be called a pastor. Mm. He's elementary. Mm. He's childish. Members will always leave you to another church, and members will always leave another church to you. And let me warn and advise people who call themselves word based teacher. If you don't work on allowing the Holy Ghost to find expression in your church, you will continue to lose members to prophetic churches. Hear me very, very well. It is not everybody that comes to your church that wants you to teach them and lecture them like a Sunday school teacher. Some of them know the Bible more than you do. You might have just 1,000 members, and I can tell you, out of the 1,000, 100 need healing. 300 need advice on financial management. 400 of them need to know and have direction of where God is taking them to. Prophetically. And if you cannot direct them, they are going to leave you and look for a prophet. Mm. There is no juju or voodoo that draws your member. In fact, if a word-based preacher and you begin to complain, a prophet use voodoo to draw your member you have just confessed your failure mm. and you have confessed that you are not genuine mm. if you are genuine jesus said the ones who are placed in my hands no one will pluck them out of my hands if they are taken out of your hands they were not yours at first you stole somebody's member There is a power coming to the church. Some of us, the dimension we are operating on, some people don't even understand. They think it's out of this world. Because some of us are living our 2040 in 2022. Let's read one scripture before we go today. Let the choir get ready for our worship. Let me show you. And that's Hebrews 6.5. Hebrew chapter 6 verse 5. Grace, this Sunday, join us. It's oversized glory. And I'm dedicating my son, Majesty Joshua Aguila. Let's be part of the life service. Yeah, read Hebrew for me. 6 5. Yeah. And have tested the goodness of the world. Have tested the goodness of the world. Of God. Uh -huh. and the powers of the age to come the powers of the age to come maybe you give me other scripture can you give me other of you? and I've tested the good word of God I've tested the good word of God and the powers of the world to come and the powers of the world to come there are some people who are having access to the power of the world to come. This world has not exist. Hmm. The world are yet to be created. But before the world are created, some people have left this world and have entered the world to come. Tapping. And they are tapping into it. My some God. people are living in 2090. My God. The dimensions of their operation is strange. That means they have exhausted 2022. Hmm. Exhausted the 21st century. They are now in the 22 century. And so when you see them operate, that dimension is older than them. So you can't understand if you are not a man of the spirit. That's why by the spirit, they are carried in the realm of the spirit. There's no war. There's no restriction. They are taken into a realm 
like dream will take you from here without visa to America. So you begin to tap in and manifest some dimensions that people cannot understand. That's why there's a dimension that some people who think they can explain the move of God, they can't explain. My God. My God. The dimension that makes a donkey to prophesy. An animal is prophesying, you can't understand. That's a dimension. A dimension that a hand is writing on the wall, mene, mene, take a FAC. That's a dimension. A dimension that is far beyond what you can explain. Dimension. A dimension that makes a prophet know that I'm leaving the world today. Mm. Trust me, Vajodan. I was going to the terminal where the aircraft will take off. Mm. He knows where the plane will take off. I hear the description. He was taking my chariot of fire. You see, when, when people say chariot of fire, that means ox. Where have you seen ox that are flying? That description was a vision that the author that was writing the book is trying to describe that, but does not mean they were actually chariots. It's another divine aircraft that carries fire, that moves like us. Because normally we know that us run on the oh, ground. Wow. They don't fly. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> my God. My God. Keep calling the numbers. My Keep God. calling the numbers. Keep calling the numbers right now. Are we ready? Get your cup of water. Give me your last word, your last word, before we worship now. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Wow. Father, it's amazing, it's so amazing. In fact, one of the places I really want to draw from one of your messages, you thought, is very strong, talking about these word-based teachers and all that. You used to make a statement, and that thing has built a foundation for me when I begin to look at these people who are caging us into just scriptures. You used to say that, where, what scripture did Noah read, read, read when he went? What those people who followed before the before this this scroll, these scriptures came? What well, that thing is a strong in fact it has helped me to know that those people who are caging us, it is just beyond scriptures. Mm -hmm. It's a dimension, it's beyond scriptures. Mm -hmm. You've made me to understand that the, the, the dimensions of, of the end time is beyond scriptures. That's it's right. Far more than that. If God if Abraham did not read any scripture. But followed God. God. It was personal experience personal. with God. Isaac, the same thing. Mm. Which scripture did Samson read? Mm. To be able to operate as Nazareth. Which one did Isaiah? We, the Bible is a collection of so many men of God and their work with God. Yes. Joshua Gila is working with God. Mm. And you are working with God. This is our generation. And I said to somebody, we are not in the days of Abraham. We are not in the days of Elijah. We are in the days of Joshua and Gila. Mm. So strong. We bless the water. We decree grace on that water. Miracles! Amen. Miracles! Amen. Miracles! Amen. Miracles! Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. As you drink that water, mm. turn around, come for your life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Keep calling the numbers right now. Miracles are happening. Put, put the numbers and call the numbers. As we are worshiping, keep calling the numbers till we go off air. God bless you. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you I want to
to see you. Open the eyes. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open, open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. I want to see you. You are the mirror 
where the Joshua generations and sons and daughters of the prophet gather together to receive from the Father again a prophetic service of enthronement. Join God's oracle, Papa Joshua Ngela, in this service of fruitfulness, a special service for the fruit of the womb. Service of royalty, service of the entrance of majesty, service of champions, team, oversized glory. I don't know who won't block my way. Anybody trying to block my way, I have a faith. If the door is blocked, I will go through the window. If the window is blocked, I will go through the roof. Can I talk to somebody here? I don't know what is blocking you from assessing your next level. I came with the carpenter's anointing. Anta Kaparagosiata. Every roof that is blocked, every door that is blocked, I uncover. Dominion, power, authority. You need to understand where you are coming from. That God has placed you under a place of grace that there can be no disgrace. There is a level where God is taking you to. You have to take charge of your life. In this service, God has prophetically instructed the servant. Open up financial doors for my people, marital doors, academic doors, international doors, landlords, real estate. It's going to be a harvest of miracles and signs and wonders, a service of impartations for pastors, ministers, leaders, workers, businessmen, a special service of anointing and healing. It's going to be a special fruit of the womb service. Come with three apple fruits, three white handkerchief, oppression, carry your babies. The wheel, the reign of prophecy. Husband family are under attack. The attack is mysterious. Nothing is working. Everybody is struggling. And they have blocked their ways. They are struggling to make it. It's not easy. It's not easy. Benjamin has experienced up and down. And the up and down is difficult. Blessing is under attack. That's the sister. They have attacked blessing. That so much, every part of her life is struggle and struggle and struggle. Gift, gift, gift. Gift. The, that's the second to the last. Yes, that one is struggling. Yes, sir. He's struggling. Yes, sir. You've seen struggle. Yes, sir. Among your father's children, you're one person that is fighting to make it. Very, very well. You're blocking your ways. That's right. But I see today, I command your doors to open. There is a strange man following you about. Yes, Are you hearing me? Yes, they are always chasing you in the grave. Yes, From today, it is over. The mighty name of Deliverance. Date 28th of August 2022. Time 6 a.m. prompt. Venue International Headquarter Champions Royal Assembly, Chikakori Kubwa, Abuja, Nigeria. For more inquiries, please call the numbers displayed on your screen and book for your deliverance. Oversized glory is here. The entrance of majesty. The entrance of majesty. The service where the Joshua generations and sons and daughters of the prophet gather together to receive from the Father again a prophetic service of enthronement. Join God's oracle, Papa Joshua Ngela, in this service of fruitfulness, a special service for the fruit of the womb. Service of royalty, service of the entrance of majesty. Service of champions, team, oversized glory. I don't know who won't block my way. Anybody trying to block my way, I have a faith. If the door is blocked, I will go through the window. If the window is blocked, I will go through the roof. Can I talk to somebody here? I don't know what is blocking you from assessing your next level. I with the carpenter's anointing and Papa Paragosiata, every roof that is blocked, every door that is blocked, I uncover dominion, power, 
authority you need to understand where you are coming from that god has placed you under a place of grace that there can be no disgrace there is a level where god is taking you to you have to take charge of your life in this service god has prophetically instructed the servant open up financial doors for my people marital doors academic doors international doors landlords real estate it's going to be a harvest of miracles and signs and wonders a service of impartations for pastors ministers leaders workers businessmen a special service of anointing and healing it's going to be a special fruit of the womb service come with three apple fruits three white handkerchief oppression carry your babies the wheel the reign of prophecy the husband family are under attack the attack is mysterious nothing is working everybody is struggling and they have blocked their ways they are struggling to make it it's not easy it's not easy benjamin has experienced up and down and the up and down is difficult blessing is under attack that's the sister they have attacked blessing that so much every part of her life is struggle and struggle and struggle gift 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 the, that's the second to the last yes, that one is struggling yes, it's struggling yes, Lord, you've yes. seen struggle yes, among your father's children you're one person that is fighting to make it very, very well. are blocking your ways that's right but i see today i command your doors to open there is a strange man following you about yes, are you hearing me yes, they are always chasing you in the yes, grave sir. from today it is over the mighty name of deliverance date 28th of august 2022 time 6 a.m prompt venue international headquarter champions royal assembly chikako rikubwa apuja nigeria for more inquiries please call the numbers displaying on your screen and book for your deliverance oversized glory is here the entrance of majesty the entrance of majesty the service where the joshua generations and sons and daughters of the prophet gather together to receive from the father again a prophetic service of enthronement join god's oracle papa joshua Ngela in this service of fruitfulness a special service for the fruit of the womb service of royalty service of the entrance of majesty Service of Champions Team Oversized Glory I don't know who won't block my way Anybody trying to block my way I have a faith If the door is blocked I will go through the window If the window is blocked I will go through the roof Can I talk to somebody here I don't know what is blocking you From assessing your next level I came with the carpenter's anointing Antakaparagosiata Every roof that is blocked Every door that is blocked I uncover Dominion power authority you need to understand where you are coming from that god has placed you under a place of grace that there can be no disgrace there is a level where god is taking you to you have to take charge of your life in this service god has prophetically instructed the servant open up financial doors for my people marital doors academic doors international doors landlords real estate it's going to be a harvest of miracles and signs and wonders a service of impartations for pastors ministers leaders workers businessmen a special service of anointing and healing it's going to be a special fruit of the womb service come with three apple fruits three white handkerchief oppression carry your babies the wheel the reign of prophecy 
husband family are under attack the attack is mysterious nothing is working everybody is struggling and they have blocked their ways they are struggling to make it it's not easy it's not easy benjamin has experienced up and down and the up and down is difficult blessing is under attack that's the sister they have attacked blessing that so much every part of her life is struggle and struggle and struggle gift 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 the, that's the second to the last. Yes, that one is struggling. Yes, is struggling. Yes, Using struggle. Yes, ma'am. Among your father's children, you are one person that is fighting to make it. Very, very well. are blocking your ways. That's right. But I see today, I command your doors to open. There is a strange man following you about. Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, they are always chasing you in the dream. Yes, From today, it is over. The mighty name of Deliverance. Date 28th of August 2022. Time 6 a.m. prompt. Venue International Headquarter Champions Royal Assembly, Chikakori Kubwa, Abuja, Nigeria. For more inquiries, please call the numbers displayed on your screen and book for your deliverance. Oversized Glory is here. The entrance of majesty. The entrance of majesty. The service where the Joshua generations and sons and daughters of the prophet gather together to receive from the Father again a prophetic service of enthronement. Join God's oracle, Papa Joshua Ngila, in this service of fruitfulness, a special service for the fruit of the womb. Service of royalty. Service of the entrance of majesty. Service of Champions Team Oversized Glory I don't know who won't block my way Anybody trying to block my way I have a faith If the door is blocked I will go through the window If the window is blocked I will go through the roof Can I talk to somebody here I don't know what is blocking you From assessing your next level I came with the carpenters anointed Every roof that is blocked Every door that is blocked I uncover Dominion power Authority You need to understand where you are coming from That God has placed you Under a place of grace That there can be no disgrace There is a level where God is taking you to You have to take charge of your life In this service God has prophetically instructed the servant Open up financial doors for my people Marital doors Academic doors International doors Landlords Real estate It's going to be a harvest of miracles and signs and wonders A service of impartations For pastors Ministers Leaders Workers Businessmen A special service of anointing and healing it's going to be a special fruit of the womb service. Come with three apple fruits, three white handkerchief, oppression, carry your babies. The will be reign of prophecy. The husband family are under attack. The attack is mysterious. Nothing is working. Everybody is struggling. And they have blocked their ways. They are struggling to make it. It's not easy. It's not easy. Benjamin has experienced up and down. And the up and down is difficult. Blessing is under attack. That's the sister. They have attacked blessing. That so much, every part of her life is struggle and struggle and struggle. Gift, gift, gift. Gift. That's the second to the last. Yes, that one is struggling. Yes, sir. Is struggling. Yes, sir. Using yes, sir. struggle. Yes, sir. Among your father's children, you are one person that is fighting to make it. Very, very well. are blocking your ways. That's right. But I see today, I command your doors to open. There is a strange man following you about. Yes, are you hearing me? Yes, they are always chasing you in the dream. Yes, From today, it is over. The mighty name of Deliverance. Date 28th of August 2022. Time 6 a.m. prompt. 
venue international headquarter champions royal assembly chikakori kubwa abuja nigeria for more inquiries please call the numbers displaying on your screen and book for your deliverance oversized glory is here the entrance of majesty the entrance of majesty the service where the Joshua generations and sons and daughters of the Prophet gather together to receive from the Father again a prophetic service of enthronement. Join God's oracle, Papa Joshua Ngila, in this service of fruitfulness, a special service for the fruit of the womb. Service of royalty, service of the entrance of majesty, service of champions, team. Oversized glory. I don't know who won't block my way. Anybody trying to block my way, I have a fate. If the door is blocked, I will go through the window. If the window is blocked, I will go through the roof. Can I talk to somebody here? I don't know what is blocking you from assessing your next level. I came with the carpenter's anointing. Every roof that is blocked, every door that is blocked, I uncover. Dominion, power, authority. You need to understand where you are coming from. That God has placed you under a place of grace that there can be no disgrace. There is a level where God is taking you to. You have to take charge of your life. In this service, God has prophetically instructed the servant, open up financial doors for my people, marital doors, academic doors, international doors, landlords, real estate. It's going to be a harvest of miracles and signs and wonders, a service of impartations for pastors, ministers, leaders, workers, businessmen, a special service of anointing and healing. It's going to be a special fruit of the womb service. Come with three apple fruits, three white handkerchiefs. Oppression carry your babies. The wheel, the reign of prophecy. Husband family are under attack. The attack is mysterious. Nothing is working. Everybody is struggling. And they have blocked their ways. They are struggling to make it. It's not easy. It's not easy. Benjamin has experienced up and down. And the up and down is difficult. Blessing is under attack. That's the sister. They have attacked blessing. That so much, every part of her life is struggle and struggle and struggle. Gift, gift, gift. Gift. The, that's the second to the last. Yes, that one is struggling. Yes, sir. He's struggling. Yes, sir. You've seen struggle. Yes, sir. Among your father's children, you're one person that is fighting to make it. Very, very well. You're blocking your ways. That's right. But I see today, I command your doors to open. There is a strange man following you about. Yes, Are you hearing me? Yes, they are always chasing you in the yes, dream. From today, it is over. The mighty name of Deliverance. Hey. 28th of August 2022 Time 6 a.m. prompt Venue International Headquarter Champions Royal Assembly Chikakori Kubwa Abuja Nigeria For more inquiries please call the numbers displaying on your screen and book for your deliverance Oversized Glory is here the entrance of majesty the entrance of majesty. The service where the Joshua generations and sons and daughters of the prophet gather together to receive from the Father again a prophetic service of enthronement. Join God's oracle, Papa Joshua Ngila, in this service of fruitfulness, a special service for the fruit of the womb. Service of royalty, service of the entrance of majesty. Service of champions, team, oversized glory. I don't know who won't block my way. Anybody trying to block my way, 
I have a faith. If the door is blocked, I will go through the window. If the window is blocked, I will go through the roof. Can I talk to somebody here? I don't know what is blocking you from assessing your next level. I came with the carpenter's anointing. Every roof that is blocked, every door that is blocked, I uncover dominion, power, authority. You need to understand where you are coming from. That God has placed you under a place of grace that there can be no disgrace. There is a level where God is taking you to. You have to take charge of your life. In this service, God has prophetically instructed the servant. Open up financial doors for my people. Marital doors, academic doors, international doors, landlords, real estate. It's going to be a harvest of miracles and signs and wonders. A service of impartations for pastors, ministers, leaders, workers, businessmen. A special service of anointing and healing. It's going to be a special fruit of the womb service. Come with three apple fruit, three white handkerchief, oppression, carry your babies. There will be reign of prophecy. Your husband family are under attack. The attack is mysterious. Nothing is working. Everybody is struggling. And they have blocked their ways. They are struggling to make it. It's not easy. It's not easy. Benjamin has experienced up and down. And the up and down is difficult. Blessing is under attack. That's the sister. They have attacked.